This week on Maker Update, 90s toy tech with an AI upgrade, return of the cyber decks, body bots, a Rubik's Cube that solves itself, and a pickup truck that writes. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to Maker Update, the show where we update you on cool things makers are making. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I've got a fun show for you. Let's get started with the project of the week. Who here is old enough to remember the Talkboy Deluxe? It was a voice-changing toy from the 90s. Its claim to fame was helping Macaulay Culkin's character impersonate his dad over the phone in Home Alone 2. But changing a recording's pitch by slowing down tape playback is a pretty cheap gimmick. What we all really wanted was a way to create a super realistic impersonation of someone's voice. A way to call in sick from school and sound like our parents. Well, thanks to Hung Trung, the potential for the Talkboy has finally been realized. His version, which he calls the Talkboy Ultra, has been upgraded with AI voice cloning software. Like the original, you press a button, record what you want to say, and then play back the altered version. But instead of a pitched down, sleepy version of your own voice, you can sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger or Barack Obama. And the really great news is that you don't need much hardware to pull it off. Inside, Hung has a Raspberry Pi Zero W, a small mic, and a USB card, a cheap USB speaker, and an LCD display. The bad news is that the Pi alone isn't enough to natively process the audio file. So what Hung's done is set it up as a server that takes the recording and sends it over to his nearby computer for processing. The computer then sends the process file back and the LCD updates to let you know that playback is ready. Of course, this also means that the bit where you train an AI to clone a new voice is also handled on your main computer. It's not a point, click, and clone situation, at least not yet. I have to admit that underneath the nostalgic thrill of this project, part of me is also a bit freaked out by the idea of a realistic voice cloning technology becoming this easy. Let me know what you think in the comments. Now for some news, this year's Hackaday Cyberdeck Challenge, sponsored by DigiKey, is officially underway. This year, there are four special categories. Icebreaker, for practical builds with impressive power or capabilities. ROM Construct, for highly customized machines. Dex Dealer, for innovations empowering your Cyberdeck. And Turing Police, for decks that are utilizing some kind of AI. The deadline to enter is August 15th, and you can find a link to details in the description. More projects! I'm a little late on this one, but I have to share it in case you are too. A small team at the University of Maryland Smart Lab created this wearable robotics platform called Calico. It's a combination of reinforced silicone track that can be attached to clothing, and a small lightweight robot that can navigate along the track using a pair of wheels that pinch and push it along. There are some practical ideas demonstrated for fitness or medical applications, but for me, I love thinking about the possibilities this opens up for wearable companion robots and cosplay. On Makezine, Takashi Kaburagi provides some tantalizing details around his self-solving Rubik's Cube project. This is a project that Tyler and I first saw at the 2019 Maker Faire Bay Area, and though it still seems like a superhuman amount of delicate soldering, Takashi's write-up on Makezine at least illuminates how a project like this is even possible. With a bill of materials, CAD models, a wiring diagram, and a snippet of code, you may be able to piece your own version together. If nothing else though, at least you get an appreciation for how this level of effort and miniaturization can lead to a result that is indistinguishable from magic. And one of the most popular, most surprising projects this week was this video from Ryder Calm Down showing how he turned his truck's tailgate into a dot matrix printer. Using a combination of solenoids, relays, a pump, and a Raspberry Pi, not only does Ryder succeed gloriously with this one, but he also built a useful local host front end for entering the message you want to write and the speed you're traveling. You can find the code on GitHub. I've got a link in the description. Now for some tips and tools. The new additions of the Arduino Uno, the Uno R4 Minima, and the Uno R4 Wi-Fi are now shipping and ready for your next project. 
If you missed the announcement back in April, these are updates to the classic Arduino Uno form factor with backwards compatible pinout and shield compatibility. The Minima, as the name implies, doesn't have many bells and whistles. Think of it as a standard Uno with more RAM, memory, and horsepower priced at $20. The R4 Wi-Fi, though, adds Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, quick pins for I2C connections, and a built-in real-time clock. But the big surprise left out of the April announcement was this built-in 12 by 8 red LED matrix display. It'll be interesting to see how people put that to use. The R4 Wi-Fi is priced around $28. You can find both using the DigiKey link in the description. On YouTube, Sam from Look Mum No Computer pays a visit to artist Loman Campbell and gets a tour of some of the amazing sonic sculptures he's created. If you're interested in the intersection of sound, engineering, and technology, there are some really inspired projects here along with some great insights from Lomond. For example, his use of the geared pager motors he refers to as GM10s. They have a built-in spring clip that limits the range of motion, perfect for mallets and percussion. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out this project by M5Stack published on the DigiKey blog. It's an umbrella that's lit up with waterproof addressable LEDs. It's a very cool effect. For this build, they're using the free WLED software for ESP32, programmed on an M5 stack Atom Light ESP32 board, which is a pretty cool, small, and inexpensive way to get a project like this off the ground. Check it out. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. Big thanks to DigiKey Electronics for making this show possible, and thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.